All right, I want to start out by saying Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahweh, Brakatha Yaharashai, Kohala Yahweh by Shem Yaharashai, Kohala Yahweh by Shem Yaharashai, by Shem Kakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine and truth and sincerity. Shalom unto the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. By Shem in the name of the world, and he calls Jesus Christ. We know his name to be Yaharashai. He is the liver, the savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your father. By Hashem in the name of the Ruach HaKadosh, which means the Holy Spirit, the living waters that flow through the hopeful elect to be able to give us knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are. If you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or other speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one elect. Shalom. And we are known as the Hebrew Israelites, the children of the Most High, children of Yasha'Allah, right, sons of the power. And we know that through Yahweh Shai being that perfect lamb, because we've been discontinued from our heritage, because we went off following after false gods and false idols, not following the law, statutes, and commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. So we were left to be, you know, controlled by Esau Edom, right? To be our basically our whooping stick. Esau means wasted away he is, and he is our adversary. He's also an adversary to Esau means wasted away he is. They are the biblical Edomites, Idumia, the modern day Assyrian, the modern day, the daughter of uh, Chaldeans. They are the wicked that it speaks about in the scriptures that will have in the latter days will have the fatness of the earth. And they will have to live by their sword, which was given them by Isaac, which was Yaharashai, if you can receive it. That's why you see in um, 80 countries, you say 750 military bases where they're able to deploy their uh, sword and their military tactics through their democracy and their manipulation of the people through fear mongering to have them, you know, be at ease against each other. You know, man on uh, man against uh, their wife, you know, wife against the children, you know, families against families. And that's how they're able to carry on their um, their sword and their um, their wickedness. By their, again, you know, paying people off. Their swords comes in many different variations. You know, one of their swords is, you know, their their television, which is the media, which goes back to media, and which goes back to witchcraft and sorcery, where they're able to divide the people through certain propagandas, just like the same thing they have done, um, you know, with this uh, this thing that they put out a couple years ago, right, where people are divided and, and what, what places they want to go, okay. And in these latter days, you know, through Yaharashai being that perfect rock, that rejected stone, we're able to get uh, stability in those times. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of the times. Those that fear Yahabah Shemar Shai, that is a treasure, right? That is a treasure to fear Yahabah Shemar Shai. Because as you see in Israel, you know, first it was with the Christians, you know, with these other, other uh, Christianity, you know, Kemet. And now it's starting to be in, in, of Israel. And that's 1 Peter 4 and 17, where it speaks about judgment will start at Israel. Those that are knowing that they are Israelites. So that's why you, you know, through the spirit, you pray that um, you're, you're on the, the right foundation. So this is what this uh, lesson is about. That, that uh, you know, that foundation of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, that word, that testimony, spirit of uh, prophecy, which is Yahweh Shai. So... It says, uh, you know, this starts off with a build on the rock. You know, that's what it's called, this this part of the scriptures. It says, Matthew, this is Yaharashai HaMashiach speaking in red letter. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto wise men, which has built his house upon a rock. Yeah, so that's, you know, also going to bless are your eyes for they see. And bless are your ears for you hear. That you're able to what? See the prophecies and you're able to hear the elders and apostles that you're not, um, you know, that's not a stumbling block to you. And these, uh, when you go into that word sayings, let's just see what it has right here. Let's see, heareth. So this is the Greek 191. It says to be endowed with the facility of hearing, not deaf, to hear, to attend, to consider, to understand, to perceive, sense is what it said. Let me actually, I got to go into... to bring more edification on that Matthews 13 and 16 
because that actually speaks about the dull of hearing. I think it actually starts in 15. Yeah, right here. So Matthews 13 and 15. Again, this is your Harashah Hamashiach speaking. For this people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing. Yeah, so they want to go with their own doctrine. You know, they love uh, filthy lucre's sake, you know, money. They love women. They love Esau, Edom. And ultimately, they've been blinded by Yahabah Shemashah. Okay, or they've been blinded by the God of this world. So they're waxing gross and, uh, you know, more and more wicked, more and more dull. Their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes, yeah, so when you when you think about dull of hearing, they're not sharp. And this word is is um, compared to what a two-edged sword cutting asunder, Hebrews 4 and 12. That this word can either cut you to the left, which is to the wicked, or it can cut you to the right, which is Harashai, which is that arm, okay, which is that rock. For this people heart has waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted, I should heal them. Yeah, so when they understand with your heart, you know, and, and with your mind, which is your, your stomach, which your, which your, you know, your belly, um, you're able to understand the, the consequences of if you don't comply to the, 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 the decrees that have been sent out through the prophecies, through the, through the prophets, Right through this word, which is Yahweh Shai. But if you repent and be converted, Acts 3 and 19, Yahweh Shem Shai will heal you because you're coming in, um, you know, in that spirit of the mercies of David. You know, you're um, being converted. You're coming with that contrite spirit and knowing that you went off. Micah 7 and 9, you're bearing your um, indignation, which is righteous anger from the Heavenly Father. So Matthew 13 and 16, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Yeah, that you're able to hear what is going on. You're able to see the prophecies. You're able to not buck up against up against the um, you know against the doctrine. Okay. So it says Matthew seven and twenty five. And the rain descended, and the floods came. No, sock you. Therefore, whoever hear these sayings of mine, doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And that's right. So when you think about a house, you know, far as, um, you know, just in a, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is a parable, you know, you build a house, you don't want to build it on sand. A lot of uh, places over there in Florida and uh, down south, what do they do? It They build it on, on, on a solid foundation. They don't build it on sand. Otherwise, it could get taken away. And that's the same thing with the scriptures. That's why, you know, the, these parables make sense. Right. Um, I want to get. Yeah, sayings. Because these sayings are commandments. They are decrees, right? We have the 613 laws, but there's also other decrees that you got to, you know, live by. Or you got to try to rehearse the righteous acts, right? So this word sayings, this is in the Greek, 3056. A word uttered by a living voice embodies a conception or idea. What someone has said, a word. And who is that word? Yahweh Shai Mashiach. And we're going to get into that. The sayings of Yahweh and who gives Yahweh gives the decree, which gives it to Yahweh Shai. And through Yahweh Shai being the perfect lamb, he has been given uh, rulership. So again, decree, mandate, a order. Okay, moral precepts given by Yahweh. A, a doctrine, a teaching. Anything reported in speech, a narration, a narrative, matter under discussion, the thing spoken, talked about, event. Right? So that's that word sayings in the Greek 3056. Actually, let's see, go a little bit deeper. Let's see the root word. It says, This is in the Greek 3004, and it reads to affirm or maintain, to teach, exhort, advise, to command, to direct, to point out with words, and ten mean to say, to call by name, to call name. Yeah, so Yahabah Shemir Ashai, to speak out, to speak or mention. And that's what that's what we do with these words through Yahabah Shemir Ashai. We were what? Making these things public. 
right? We're publishing them and making them public. That's where you go on the highways and the byways. We're also on the unicorn, which is which is the internet, right? And then this, you know, we're preaching in the four corners of the earth, and and you have people in all different parts of the earth that are, um, you know, of the world that are what preaching the same doctrine, right? Philippians uh, two and uh, two and two, all like-minded doctrine. That's why those unity camps don't work, right? Because now we understand the sayings and the parable a little bit more. Matthew seven and twenty-four. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. I will liken it unto the wise man which built his house upon a rock. That's right. So let's get into, you know, what that actual rock is. Because it says it's a, a wise man. Compares it to a wise man, right? And so this is Proverbs 1 and 5. Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So you might have heard this, you know, through through um, the internet. You might have um, ha came up to somebody on the highways and the byways. But what did you do? You inquired. You inquired. You know, you might have started um, seeing that, okay, I got to I gotta start growing my beard. You know, I got to um, maybe start celebrating the Sabbath. But you have to, what, be fully persuaded in your own mind. That's why it tells you not to, you know, judge another man. Now, you give, um, you know, you... You know, you give them advice, you know, as far as what they're supposed to do, but they have to be fully persuaded in, in their own mind. OK, because a wise man will what here he will increase in his learning. So he will start to, um, you know, either take notes, start watch certain certain videos, maybe inquire on videos to watch, you know, the um, basically the milk scriptures. that it speaks about in. Um, was that first Peter two and two? Where it speaks about the milk scriptures, right? It might be um, Second Peter two and two, but I, I know it's in uh, Peter, right? And it's speaking about the milk scriptures, so you will inquire in those certain things, right? To understand a proverb and interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Yeah, so a dark saying could be the name Yahweh Shemir Hashai, because that's in the ancient Hebrew, right? And, and we we have came over to this land and we learned English. We we don't have. Again, we've been discontinued from our heritage because we weren't re rehearsing the righteous acts. You know, so we don't know who we are. Yeah, so that's First Peter 2 and 2. It says, uh, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, they may grow thereby. Yeah, so that's what you, you know, that's what a, um, a person that's coming into the truth that is coming into that, you know, a wise counsel, a wise understanding. They're going to inquire, you know, in, in these um, interpretations, these um these uh, dark sayings, you know, whatever they may be, you know, a dark saying could be, um, you know, far as revelation, you know, the karagma, things like that, right? Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of Adawan Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Yeah, so they, when, when they, um, they don't fear Yahweh, they don't have knowledge. They are fools. They despise wisdom. And, and those that, um, Despise wisdom or what? Going to be destroyed because ultimately that is the word of Yahweh Shemar Ashai. Real quick, Proverbs 13 and 13. Who despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is the fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. And that's what we're trying to do is be able to what escape death, which is to uh, escape Esau Edom. Esau is the so-called white men of this world, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts. The Kennedys, they have been, again, given the fatness of the earth. And all they can offer you is death. You know, they have uh, chemtrails in the air, right? They have, uh, you know, GMOs in the food. They'll feed you with a false philosophy saying that our, our Lord, Yahweh Shai, is a so-called white man, a uh, hippie, okay, when he's actually a so-called black man, right, with woolly hair. So they'll describe him in a, in a um, you know, as a, as a, as a pale face you know, white man, you know, and this is not about, um, you know, complex, you know, how, your skin complexion. This is actually about the spirit, but this is how our Lord Yahweh Shai is described in the scriptures. So we have to interpret it the correct way. That's having the correct doctrine. So those that are calling on, you know, JC and, and saying that, you know, Edomites can be saved. That's a wicked doctrine, right? The fear, they, and they don't have a fear of Yahweh Shai, Shai, and they will be destroyed if they don't repent. The fear of Adam and Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay.
So those are, they're not considered wise men. They're considered foolish. And, um, you know, in Jeremiah, it, it speaks about our people being sought as children, which means stupid. Okay. This is more about that wisdom, you know, as far as a wise man regaining wise counsel. It says, this is a wisdom of Solomon 7. And this is an apographer, wisdom of Solomon 7. Yeah, I'll just get to the point uh, 26 for she is the bright and that she is speaking about wisdom is the brightness of the everlasting light. And who is that light? Yahweh Shai HaMashiach to to be able to give you that that perfect light that shines to that perfect day. That's a uh, Proverbs um, 4 and 18. Let me just get it real quick. Proverbs 4 and 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more into that perfect day. Right. And it also speaks about that um, through that precepts, I get understanding, right? And when you get that understanding, you're able to uh, be able to maneuver in this world and you love not the things in the world and what you are, what transfer, transferred in your mind, trans, transformed in your mind. So it says, Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 26, for she is brightness of everlasting light, that unspotted mere power of Yahweh in the image of his goodness. And being but one, she do all things and remaining herself, she maketh all things new and all things entering to the holy soul. She maketh them friends of our power, Yahweh and the prophets. Yes, yeah, so that is a friend to Yahweh Bashim Rashai and the prophets. Why? Because that is a light that shines in a dark place. Because we are in the valley of shadow of death. You know, Job speaks, Job 10 and 21, right, speaks about that, the shadow of Adua, shadow of valley of death, you know, and also Psalms 23. For Yahweh, and why? Because it's constant death. Esau, Edom is in rulership, right? Especially over here in Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is, is known as, um, you know, modern day Babylon, okay, which is America. Babylon goes back to Gabal, which goes back to confusion. Right, and America goes back to bitter. We're in a bitter, confused state when you have Esau, Edom in control. You have women over men. You have man on man, woman on woman, transformers, right? And then you have wicked doctrines. Then you have people that only lust after you know money, having sex with another man's wife. They're all abominations to Yahweh Shem Rashi. That's why we gotta cry aloud and spare none and give our people warning. That is love, right? For Yahweh love none. But him that dwelleth with wisdom. So if you don't have no wisdom, then Yahweh Shem Rashad don't love you. Okay? <laughs> that, that's the point. You know, a wise man is going to retain what? Wise counsel. And that goes through that, that actual, um, that foundation. So going, and then one more on, um, you know, as far as that uh, wisdom. Proverbs 9 and 9. Give instruction to a wise man and he will yet, Sakya, give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in his learning. Yeah, so he will increase what in the, in the learning because he's starting to understand that you, um, these things are real. It's life and death, right? And you don't want to be the side of Esau because Esau is going to be destroyed for his transgression to the law because he is profane outside the temple and this place is going to be destroyed especially babylon the great and other parts of the world not all of the world is going to be all of the land is not going to be destroyed but it needs a cleansing agent <clears throat> proverbs 9 and 10 the fear of adamon yahweh is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the holy is understanding so again that says the same thing basically in proverbs 1 and 5 and then it says the same thing what in matthews um, 7 and uh, 24 and that's all built on that rock. Because we know that the what the base things were set up. Actually, let me get that first. The base things were set up in this world to what confound the wise. That's why the, the corner, that's why that cornerstone was rejected. Yaharashai was rejected. Right? Because people love their own lives. They love their their status, whatever their status might be.
Okay, so this I'll start from uh, 27. 1 Corinthians 1 and 27. But our power, it says, but our power had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and our power had chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Yep. So it says, but Yahweh has chosen the foolish things of the world to put shame to the wise, and Yahweh has chosen the weak things of the world to put shame to the things which are mighty. So that's just showing you that the mighty ones are the ones with this knowledge, wisdom, understanding. But what are we? We're shunned on. We're, we're treated like, um because again, we're in a low estate. And our true power hasn't hasn't um, been magnified yet, right? Through through us, he's um you know his name is being magnified, but through the world they don't know him. But they're gonna know him through what? Through destruction, through his judgment. He is known by his judgment. That's how they will know him because that's how you you're gonna fear somebody. Okay, you might have uh, love for somebody, but but that that love you will cross them. But if you fear somebody, it's it's a big difference. Okay, and that and that that's cause um you know twofold to love me is to what fall the loud such commitments to the best of your ability, to what repent. Okay, that means to humble yourself to be me. He's only how about Shema is only coming for the meek and lowly. So First Corinthians one and twenty eight and the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath our power Yahweh chosen yet and the things which are not to bring not things are that are that no flesh should glory in its own presence. And that's what you're seeing, a lot of people glorying in their own presence. You know, these different camps, they're glorying and they're, um, they're paucity, they're, sorry, I'm, I'm butchering that word, apostate, which is their own personal uh, beliefs. They're renouncing of certain religions. They learn the correct doctrine. And then what they do, they just come up with their own doctrine because so they can uh, sound important. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll exalt themselves you know, they'll, they'll base, they'll exalt themselves, right? But they that uh, exalt themselves shall be a base, and those that humble themselves shall be exalted, roughly paraphrasing. That means to be um, lowly and meek, because there is an order, there is a rank, right? First Corinthians 1 and 30, But him, ye in Hamashiach, who of our power Yahweh is made unto his wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, that he glory, let him glory in our Lord Yahweh Shai. Yeah, so that's who you boast in, Yahweh Shai. You don't boast in your own riches. Because we, we, are, we are but a bucket of dust. We went off, right? And we don't know if we're chosen. We don't, because only a uh, lack, lack um, number of men are going to even get the understanding. Lord willing, we endure to the end. We be those men, right? So this is Jeremiah 9 and 23. Thus said Adawan Yahweh, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. So just because you got a couple dollars over here, maybe you got a house or maybe you got, you know, a certain amount of wives or whatever, you got a great job or whatever, you shouldn't glory in that because Yahweh Shema Shai ultimately gave that to you and he could take it away at any time, Right. Jeremiah 9 and 24, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth, knoweth me that I I am Adawan Yahweh, which exercise love and kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, said Adawan Yahweh. And that's right, because that who is the judge, and who has he put at his right hand? Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, okay, which is also known as that arm, the destroyer, the peacekeeper, okay? He's the one that's in, um, you know, in control of all this, right? Because Yahweh has put him in order. That's the decree. So this is um, Luke ten and sixteen. He that heareth me, wait. He that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you despises me, and he that despiseth me despises him that sent me. So who sent um, Yahweh, right? Yahweh, okay. Who sent um, who sent the prophets? Yahweh, right? As you go into it, this is Jeremiah three and fifteen. Jeremiah three and fifteen. I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Yeah, you're Lahab. So that's that's of his of his heart. And what does he do? He gives the secrets to 
to his prophets. Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord, our power, Yahweh, will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. So what is the secret? The secret is the scriptures, the deep, dark sayings of what's going to happen. The parables are what's going to happen to this place to be able to give others warning. It says in uh, John 21 and about 17, it says three times for three times for understanding. If you love me, feed my sheep. If that is your measure, Right. Those secrets have been given to the prophets, like the name. So those that mock and scoff and start calling on JC and Yah and, and Yahshua, all those, those are going off. That's the wrong name. That's incorrect. That's not the new song. Right? And how do we know that? Through the pastors, the, through the, um, the elders and apostles that have broken down the correct way. And through us being that, 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 that church of Bereal, you know, studying that show that self improve and saying, okay, and discerning it, what through the spirit. This is again going going in on the on the rock, right? Building your rock in a what a strong place, right? Isaiah eight and fourteen, he shall be a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling block, and for a rock of offense to both houses of Israel, for a gin, right, and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Yes, yeah, so he shall be what, he shall be as a sanctuary, so a, a fortress, a safe place. Psalms, um, ninety one and two. He will be as a sanctuary, but a stone of a stumbling and a rock of offense to both houses of Israel as a trap and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And so that goes into um, the northern and southern tribes being put back together. Right. So it could be a stumbling block to a lot of people, as we're seeing. So let me just get that real quick, just to back that up. That's Psalms 91 and 2. Yeah, Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place, and where's the secret place? In these scriptures, in this word, right? Of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, right? I say of Adonai Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my power, and him I will trust, okay? Why? Because we're going to need to be delivered out of uh, Jacob's trouble. We're going to be delivered out of our temptation. That's why you have to trust in Yahweh Hashem Rashai and the works that he has done. That means you have to what? Believe in the report. Acts 4 and 11. This is the stone which was set at naught, you builders which have become the head of the corner. Right? Neither is there salvation in any other. So no man can be able to save you. That goes into uh, Jeremiah. Jeremiah 5 and 17. We're speaking about. Let's see. Let me just back that up real quick. Jeremiah. We're never, never to trust in uh, man. Let's see. Slaki. Yeah, so Slaki. It was uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5. Thus said Adawan Yahweh, Cursed be the man that trusted man and that make it flesh his arm, whose heart depart from Adawan Yahweh. So that's what we did before. We were trusting in men and trusting in their idols and their, and their worship and what? We were um, discontinued from our heritage. So let's read it again. Neither is there, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men where we must be saved. Let's see what it says about that word name. It has the same meaning as it does in other parts of the scriptures. Yep. So in that name, it goes in the Greek 3686. And so right here in about the middle, it says mentioning, hearing, remembering the name for one's rank or authority, interest, pleasure, command, excellence, deeds. So that's Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. That is that name. That's so. Uh, that's a strong tower. That 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 um, rejected cornerstone. That the builders rejected, right? And so, and not rejecting the the word, which is Yahweh Shai. You have to what? Believe the report. Isaiah 53 and 1, who have believed our report, to whom is the arm, and who is the arm? That's Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, and Adawan Yahweh revealed, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. 
he hath no form nor commonness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Okay, so that's uh, the root out of Jesse, which is uh, you know King David's, uh, you know King uh, David's uh, ruler um, line, Slakia, but the root of Jesse, which is uh, Jesse is uh, David's dad, right? Isaiah fifty three and three, he is despised and rejected of men, which is Yahushua came through, right? So fulfilling prophecy, Isaiah forty fifty. Slaki, Isaiah 53 and 3, he is despised and rejected of men, all right? And why is he rejected by men? Because he's coming with the sound doctrine. He's an austere man. He's not coming with the with the antics. He's not coming with no gimmicks. That's why, that's how you know a true man of the Lord. They're not coming with no gimmicks, okay? They're not trying to um, sell you things, you know? I mean, I know brothers, you know, sell things, but they're not, that's not their first thing, Okay. Isaiah 53 and 3, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Yeah, so um, he hid his face. That goes into um, that he will return to a place until they have uh, acknowledged their offenses. Yeah, so Hosea 5 and 15, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. So right now, through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, um, giving us this knowledge, wisdom, understanding, waking up those dry bones, right, that were in the valley of shadow of death, we're able, we're seeking him, you know, and we should seek him, what, 10 times more because of all the times that we went off. Think about all the times you went off and that's how many times you should be seeking him. That's why you should be diligent in your search. Now, we know that there's going to be times when the world, you know, you know, you have challenges and things like that. But we also have to, uh, you know, know that we got to do the work and not put the plow, not put the plow down. OK. Because your Shai didn't put the plow down. Right. And that's how we're able to even think about immortality or salvation or even think about the kingdom. Isaiah 53 and four, surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him. Right, here. Isaiah 53 and three, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, and we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and he was esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of our power and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. Yes, yeah, so that's how we were able to get what this grace period. Because right now, Yahweh can't even look at us because we are what? But filthy rags, right? So the, how he looks at us through Yahweh shot being that perfect lamb coming here, um, coming here in the flesh and what? Being that perfect lamb. Right. And that's how we're able to to get healed, to be able to have redemption. Right. To be able to have mercy. But you have to what? Believe the report. And just to, you know, go back to that arm. You know, who is that arm? Because of his sacrifice, we were able to be healed. Right. Psalms 110, because we are sick and we still need that. Uh, we still need Yahweh Shai to what? Cut off this long disease, as it says in Ecclesiastes 10 and 8. Because he is the physician that cut off that long disease, which is Esau Edom, right? But we're able to get comfort and be able to have that intercessor to be able to have uh, some sense of, um, you know, again, you know, comfort. What through the scriptures, through that precepts, I get understanding. Psalms one ten and one. The Lord, I don't want Yahweh said unto me, Yahweh Shai, sit thou on thy right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. And so that's what's going on right now. This is the process, the process of a kingdom being being uh, translated because of ill-gotten gains. As it says in Daniel's 2 and uh, 20 and 21, where it speaks about, uh, you know, the kings being put down and another king being put up. Also, 1 Samuel uh, 2, um, 2 and 6 down to 8, we're speaking about, you know, raise, them, raise up uh, kings and princes from the dunghill. Okay, because we know that the base things were set up right now. So this kingdom is going to be transferred to who? To Yahweh Shai. Okay, and Yahweh Shai will be in rulership because that is the creed that was given to Yahweh that he was what given all power. And the, but but what is he bound by? 
the the um this word which is through the the spirit of prophecy which is the testimony of harashai that's revelation 19 and 10. because we weren't sold um sake let's see Oh, yeah, let me get a couple. I want to get a couple more scriptures actually on that arm. This is Psalms 98 and 2. Actually, it's 98 and 1. Psalms 98 and 1. It says, The Lord, Adawan Yahweh, a new song, for he had done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. Okay, the victory over who? Over death. Okay, over Esau, Edom. Through, again, Yaharashai's sacrifice. And we'll just, you know, back that up with another one where it says 1 Corinthians 15. Because he, because Yaharashai is what defeated death through him being the perfect lamb. 1 Corinthians 15 and 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on. Saki, right here. 1 Corinthians 55. Right now, yeah, kind. So this is right. First Corinthians fifteen and fifty four. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass, saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up by victory. Okay. And that's Yaharashai. He has swallowed up victory. Okay, Yaharashai is also known as um, you know, victory. Okay. Because he is our salvation. And again, we weren't sold. We weren't sold, um, you know, to these other nations, you know, because he, he wanted to basically send us off. Right. Yeah. Through four and uh, six. You were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved Yahweh to wrath, you were delivered unto the enemies. For you provoked him that made you by sacrificing to devils and not to Yahweh. You have forgotten the everlasting power, Yahweh, that brought you up. And you have greed, Jerusalem, that nursed you. Yeah, so we have went up against the system. Because that's why we were brought to a low estate and Esau, Edom was risen up. Right? And that's why Yahweh Shai had to come back and be that perfect lamb. Be that stronghold. Be that rock. Because again, this is what we're doing. Exodus 20 and 3. Exodus 20 and 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And what did we have? We had all those uh, those false idols and false gods, you know, and deities. Because, you know, even uh, King Solomon, um, you know, he led in his latter days went off far as uh, with the women. That's why he was beaten with many stripes, showing you that he was Yahweh Shai. Because Yahweh Shai wasn't beaten with many stripes, right? Or um, Slakia, um, so Solomon wasn't beaten with many stripes, or right? Yahweh Shai was. Okay. Exodus 20 and 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or like or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath and that is in the water under the earth. And don't we do that to this day? Okay, you got these Kemet gods, you got these, um, you know, these uh, other heathen nations worshiping, you know, the fish god, you got Dagon. The day God, which is the fish God. Okay, far as, you know, you got people in the Catholicism, Christianity. Exodus 20 and 5. Thou shalt now bow down to thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, Adonai Yahweh, they, thy power, am a jealous God. Right? A jealous power. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third, fourth generation of them that hate me. So those people that rejected Yahweh rejected that arm, are going to be visited in this time. That's why we have to approach this with fear and trembling. Okay? Because, this, again, this is life and death. And Yahweh has, has has the power to be able to give you victory. But when you reject this word... Wait, this... Um, 
Yeah, con. So I'll go I'll go back to this one. John one and one. You when you reject this word, you reject uh, salvation. You reject the victory. John one and one. In the beginning was the word, which was Yahweh Shai. Going back to and it says right there, Genesis one and one. Who gave Yahweh gave the decree to Yahweh Shai? Yahweh Shai gave the decree to the Alahayim, which is the angels and the powers. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with our power, Yahweh, and the word was our power. The same was in the beginning with our power, Yahweh, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Okay, so he made all this stuff through um, Yahweh giving the decree to Yahweh Shai. And him was life, and life was the light of men, and that's how we're, that's how you're able to have that breath, because again, Yahweh was giving the decree to Yahweh Shai to give life. To be able to give you that breath, that knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the scriptures. And that light shineth in the darkness, and the dark comprehended not. Yeah, so people that are in the darkness, those that rejected that cornerstone, they're not going to understand it. You know, and they're going to mock, they're going to scoff. You know, if brothers go on the highways and the byways, they see that people are rejecting, um, you know, this word. They're rejecting their heritage, you know, just also they can um, be able to stay here and live in this evil, wicked society. to live in darkness. Which is confusion. And again, Yahweh Shema Shai is only dealing with the elect few uh, number of men. You know, going back into that rock. This is 2 Samuel 22 and 47. The Lord, Adam Yahweh, believe and blessed be my rock and exalted be my power, Yahweh, the rock of my salvation. Okay? The rock of my salvation. That's how you're able to be what stable in these times because it's gonna get it's gonna get ugly. Okay. <laughs> it's gonna get ugly, man. The time of Jacob's trouble, you already see it. There's judgment out there. And if you don't have that rock, then you are what? Gonna fall in the storm. And it's brewing right now. Okay. And again, when you reject that name or when you reject that, that cornerstone, right, you're rejecting something that is safe, which is the name. Proverbs 18 and 10, the name of Adam and Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and it is safe. So the righteous are going to run into it. Those wise men are going to run into it. Those that have wisdom and knowledge in this time are going to be able to run to it and it's safe. Again, that's Psalms 91 and, uh, you know, and two, that fortress. Right, that tower. And when you think about a tower, what it's able to be able to see. You know, um, when you think about back in the day, you know, as far as the castles and stuff, they would have someone, they would have watchmen on top of the tower and, and seeing who, who's able to come, whether it was an enemy, whether it was another king coming through or whatever that it was. And they were able to what? Blow the trumpet and to give people warning about what's about to happen, whether it's war or whether it's, you know, just... Um, you know, regular days. That's why they have different sounds. And right now we're blowing the trumpet saying, hey, there's going to be war. You better uh, repent and be converted and come to your true power because that is a strong tower, which is that name. So those that reject that name, they reject the rank of Yahweh Shemir Hashai, which they will be rejected because that's Proverbs 13 and 13. But we know through through much tribulation, we shall what? Enter into the kingdom. Acts 14 and 22, confirming the souls of our disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. And that goes back to that storm. Okay, those that built a rock on the solid foundation and those that built it on the sand. So going back to it. Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto the wise man which built his house upon a rock. Who's that rock? Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Who are those wise men? Lord willing, we're those wise men. Because we're inquiring. We're, we're being fearful. And the rain descendeth, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So constantly we're being challenged. We're being challenged far as, uh, you know, in our flesh, 
you know, lusting after our flesh and the, and the worldly things in this world. We're being challenged by people that are that say they're of Israel. We're being challenged by people um, that are they, you know are completely against Israelites that say that we are um, you know extremists or whatever. We are um, you know doomsday people. Okay, all those things were you know. Then you have Esau Edom against you. Then you have the technology against you. You have the mockers and the scoffers. Okay, you might be in your your own household, your family, and then you also you have what the um, you know children, again a, a man's foe shall be of his own household. So you could have your own household against you for this truth, but that's through much tribulation, Acts fourteen and twenty two. We shall enter into the kingdom, but if you're built upon that rock, right, you're going to be able to withstand um, the storms. It says, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock, okay. And every and every one that heareth these sayings of mine doeth them, not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sand, okay. And we don't want to build our house up. Let's see what it says for rock. Okay, yeah, Petra, that's what I thought it was. So Petra goes to a rock or cliff, a ledge, a projecting rock, right? A metaphor, a man like a rock be reason of firmness and strength for soul. Let's go into the uh, root definition. Yeah, and that's that's the corner. That's, you know, that's all the, how the church was built, right? The rock, the stone, which is Peter, one of the 12 tribes of Yahrashai. Okay. So going back to it, because through much tribulation, let's let's uh, get something real quick to back up when the, when the storm happens. So this is Matthew seven and thirteen. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go the rat. So, you know, when you think about, um, you know, a, a straight, it's a difficult, it's a, a position of difficulty, okay? And what is that Broadway? Broadway is Christianity, and it says don't follow a multitude to, to do evil, roughly paraphrasing, right? You know, Christianity, um, you know, Kemet, you know, um, five percenter, nation of Islam, uh, uh you know, just being a nigga, you know, a, a, a hip hop, you know, dude, you know, a worldly guy, you know, being a pimp, all these different things are just a broad way that lead it to destruction. And many there be which go there at because straight is the gate. Yeah. So the, the position of difficulty, it also says in second Ezra is um, seven and seven, where it says, you know, fires on one side and waters on the other. Right. That we're going to have to enter in and then you have to go what down that straight gate. So you're always going to be tempted. Again, Acts 14 and 22, through much tribulation, what we shall enter to the kingdom. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And what is life? Yahweh He is that breath, as we, we read many times in, um, you know, in this lesson, which leadeth into life and few there be that find it. So many are called, but few are chosen. Again, this is a very small sanctuary. This is a remnant, uh, a residue of men that believed in Yahweh Shai back then over 2,000 years ago, and they're back to get today, again, where it says about Exodus 20 and 3, um, the third or fourth generation that, are, that rejected Yahweh Shai, they're getting visited. And meanwhile, we're getting rebuked because we're getting chastised by Yahweh Shema Shai, but he's given us mercy to be able to turn back, to be able to what? Study thy show thyself improve, repent, be ye converted, prayer without ceasing, you know, all these different spiritual tools. These are gifts from Yahweh Shema Shai. Okay, but we have to what? Enter to a straight path, which is a position of difficulty. Let me just go one more scripture about that. James 1 and 12. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endure in temptation, for he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord Yahweh Shai had promised to him that love him. So those that love Yahweh Shai, and it says, if you love me, John 21 and 17, if you love me, feed my sheep. Okay. And, and those that have, have the different measure of just believing, 
right? But you're going to have to enter into temptation. You know, again, we're in the world. We're in our bodies. We're not in we're not in the spirit world. We haven't entered into the second covenant. Okay, once we have the second covenant, there's going to be um, the um, the law, statute, commandments are going to be in our inward parts, and we're going to be perfect. Okay, so that but we have to what endure. Let me get um. I think that's first. Let me just check right here real quick. Yeah, let me get that. First Peter 1 and 7. First Peter 1 and 7. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish through it be tried with fire might be found into praise and honor and glory in an appearing of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Okay? So we're, we have to be tried in these times because when you think about gold or silver, when it's when it's uh, burnt in a fire, when it's being made, it doesn't you know when it first starts out, it's not the the best looking, but when it when it's um, you know made through that fire, and when it comes out, when you know that it's done, it actually comes in the image of the Creator. So whoever you know who created you, who is the Potter, Yahweh Bashem Rashi, right? So in the you want to be in the image of Yahweh Rashi, right, to the best of your ability, but it's again a trial of your faith. That's why you have to fret not. And wait on the Lord Yahweh Shai and not, um, you know, trust in your own, um, your own ways. So I'm going to end it here. Okay, it's lucky. Because this is what's coming, right? This is, um, I'll, I'm just going to um, go through it. Revelation 19, 11, I saw heaven open up, behold, a white horse, and he sat upon him, was called faithful and true. And his righteousness, he do judge and make war. So that white horse is Yahweh Shai. Okay, white white goes back to um, being pure. And in what he's faithful and true in righteousness. This is a future prophecy. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. And he had a name written in that no man knew about himself. So many crowns are what? All the all the kings um, of this world. You know, the Moabites, you know, the Russians, the, uh, you know, Joe Buttheads. All these people, he's going to have all their crowns. You know, Macaroon, you know, Trudeau. All these people that think that there's somebody, these kings of this world, he's going to have all their crowns, right? And that's a, you know, spiritual sense, right? Revelation 19 and 13, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the word of Yahweh. So that's that word right there, which is Yahweh Shai, that, again, that rock, that cornerstone. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses and clothed in fine linen and white and clean. And out of his mouth go a sharp sword that with it it should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he shall tread upon the winepress fierceness and his wrath of the almighty power, Yahweh. So, um, you know, that's spoken about in uh, Isaiah 34, you know, also um, Isaiah 63, as far as he's coming in, um, he's coming for vengeance and it is a righteous thing to recompense vengeance on your enemies. This is the, this is the point right here. Revelation 19 and 16, and he had on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's that's what you want. You want to you want to follow, uh, kiss that son unless he be mad, someone that's going to be in power. Why would you want to follow Esau? This is the end of his kingdom. And those that trust in him are what? Jeremiah 17, uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5, I brought it out. Those that trust in that arm shall be what? Um, shall be destroyed. You know, roughly paraphrasing. And those that trust in um, Esau, Edom shall be what? Thrust through. So I just want to get that word name. And we, we, we brought that out earlier. And again, that, that is speaking about uh, rank. Hearing, remembering the name for one's rank, authority, interest. Please, please command, you know, person reckoned up by name. Okay. And that's not a tattoo when it's speaking about on his thigh, okay? That's when, when you went to war, you would have it, um, you know, have it written right there, okay? As far as, um, you know, your um, your garments, okay? All right? So, and he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that's our Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. And that's why, 
you want to have that your foundation built on the rock, which is that that cornerstone that was rejected. Otherwise, you're going to be destroyed in this place. So let me I'm going to bring it out. This is the main scripture. So Matthew 7, and I'll just start from the, uh, the, the beginning and I'll go through Matthew 7 and 24. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Again, that's Yahweh Shai. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So all these people mocking and scoffing, your family members, um, your job, whatever that it may be, Esau, Edom, okay? You're able to what? Keep going. Keep going. You know, you're going to have bumps and bruises in this thing. You're not going to be unscathed. Okay. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon sin. So if you're not likened unto this word, again, Proverbs 13 and 13, you shall be destroyed because he that despises the word shall be destroyed. Okay. That means you built your house upon sin. All right. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Yeah, so that's Esau, Edom, kingdom and those that believe in, um, you know, believe in uh, Slakia and those that believe in, uh, you know, Esau, Edom's ways and these other false doctrines, they're going to have a, a great fall, right? So let me, Matthew 7 and 27 and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house and it fell and then great was its fall. And it came to pass when Yaharashai had ended these sayings and the people were astonished by his doctrine for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. So, <laughs> and why? Because Yaharashai is the word. Okay. He is Lord of Lord, Kings of Kings. He's just waiting to be magnified. That's why you have to build your house upon a rock, which is upon Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which is the, um, those builders rejected, right? But he's coming to get his name magnified because he, for he taught them as one having authority. Yeah, he had authority. Okay. He didn't come in. Oh, I don't know. You know that I don't know spirit. No, he, he's taught with authority, right? And not as the scribes. He didn't come with, um, you know, selling gimmicks. He came to what? Do his father, father's business. So with that, Rakatha Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Shalom to Alek, Kwam Yashallah.